Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Tom K. Wilson, provides you with insight and guidance from his years of experience as a successful real estate entrepreneur on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate, and much, much more. Here's your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. Thanks for being with us again, and welcome to Real Estate Radio Live on KDOW 1220 AM, the Wall Street Business Network, the leading business radio station for uh, San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California about uh, business-related topics. Our uh, topic is always real estate investing, and this is part of the uh, Real Estate Radio Live a uh, set of programs which comes to you uh, daily Monday through Friday at uh, 3 p.m. and on Tuesdays and Thursdays at uh, 2 p.m. You can always go to our TomWilsonProperties.com and uh, pull up our podcast or you can go to iTunes or you can go to YouTube and find out the uh, different programs and guests that we've had on, <clears throat> including such notable guests in recent weeks, is Dr. Doug Duncan from uh, Chief Economist of Fannie Mae and Robert Kiyosaki, Bruce Norris, John O'Toole, and, and uh, many other great guests. So, um, so check that out and go look for your favorite uh, topic and favorite guests and hear what they have to say. Uh, and go to TomWilsonProperties.com, sign up for our newsletter. It gives you a weekly update on what's going on in the world of uh, real estate and economics and see what our latest products are, Wilson Investment Properties is a uh, is their company that provides turnkey residential and commercial uh, properties to investors, uh, mostly in uh, the Texas area. And today we're also we're going to focus on one of those properties called Western Crossing. Western Crossing Retail Center is in Texas. It's in Amarillo, Texas, and my uh, syndicating partner and. Uh, Longtime uh, favorite commercial broker is Steve Fithian, who's on with us today. Steve has uh, had over 30 years' experience as a uh, real estate investment uh, investor and uh, broker, 25 years of which in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He's owner of Sperry Van S. well, SVN, as it's called now, formerly called Sperry Van S. Brokerage Office. He has a property management company. He's won many awards for being the best commercial transaction of the year, commercial realtor of the year award and so forth. He's also a CPA, and uh, he uses that uh, talent and education to do wonderful due diligence on properties. I always like to uh, point out to folks that he's done uh, such a good job for me, and part of that's because he's told me more properties to walk away from than to buy, and um, in part, in addition to his in integrity and wanting long-term relationships, the other reason he's able to do that is because he has such good connections that he gets over uh, 300 deals a day across his desk to sift through and find the best golden nuggets. And one of those nuggets that he has recently found that we're very excited about is uh, Western Crossing Retail Center. And uh, Steve, uh, let's bring you on board here. Welcome to the program again. Well, thank you, and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Steve, uh, before we get into the specifics of Western Crossing, uh, Let's give just a brief amount of background. Many of our listeners have heard uh, some of these reasons why we invest in what we do and why we're making certain things available to our investors. But um, first of all, uh, you and I have uh, invested in and been involved in deals in both uh, single-family homes and duplexes and fourplexes and multifam products and condo conversion projects and and uh, commercial products to own and syndicate. Uh, you've also been in um, storage and warehousing, and we've been invested in industrial. We've, uh, we've certainly been in many different aspects of, uh, of real estate. And, what do you, and tell us, uh, when someone asks you what's the best thing to invest in, what do you tell them? Well, I'm a big believer in market cycles, and so I always... Uh, look at the market cycles constantly, and currently, uh, for example, multifamily, in my opinion, that market cycle is not the right time to invest. Uh, I have statistics nationwide, but specifically what my focus is is more the, the Texas market, 
And in Texas, we've certainly passed the, the top of the peak uh, for multifamily. So I'm a, a long-term investor. And so I look for, you know, where are there gaps in the marketplace? And so currently, I like industrial, retail, and office product in Texas uh, due to market cycles. As you look at the charts that uh, Steve uh, gets from his market research, you can see that it's not just Texas, but most, most major metros in the United States you can see that multifamily has peaked. So what does that mean? Does that mean you can't get them? No, you can get them, but you're going to pay more money for it, and the returns are going to be less. Uh, there are times when it's not been the case, and we've uh, I've owned uh, eight different uh, multifam properties. Steve has owned many of them. And uh, but for example, two years ago, one that Steve and I owned together, which was a ten million dollar Class A center that we that we loved dearly, we uh, decided to sell at a cap of six, and we exchanged it into two commercial properties at caps of eight point two and nine. So that's an example of what you can do by moving your assets from uh, something that has peaked into a market that has not peaked yet. And of course, as an investor, if you're, say, uh, a, uh, an investor who's investing in a syndication, you want to be investing in something that is, uh, you know, in the right market cycle and, and in the right metro. So that's the summary of that. Um, we uh, ne- need to now move, I think, on to, we've done the, talked a little bit about the cycles. Uh, what do you like, Steve, about the uh, commercial properties in general? Well, commercial properties, uh, their leases are much more long-term, and uh, they also typically have bumps in them. And in addition, the on the commercial leases, most of the tenants pay for the operating expenses. So as you go on in a transaction, you know, go on to year two, three, four, five, you're much more insulated from inflation issues uh, with commercial properties, whereas, say, a residential lease, a residential lease is six to 12 months, so much shorter term. And then uh, the tenants, generally, uh, utilities are the only thing that they pay. Property taxes, insurance, repairs and maintenance, et cetera, are still a, uh, on the landlord. Uh, so those are the, the primary things that I like. And then secondly, the uh, commercial transactions, office, retail, well, you know, they're larger transactions. And so there's uh, a lot more economies of scale. So uh, those are some of the main reasons that I favor those investments. And in general, multifam. And by the way, multifam does not mean a fourplex. Multifam is uh, five units or larger in the world of commercial multifam investing. Different lenders, different uh, professionals that deal with the uh, once you get past the demarcation of four to, to five units. But in general, uh, both multifam and uh, commercial, you get economies of scale. But then within that, you want to be focused on whatever's uh, got the best uh, returns because of the current supply demand ratios and whatever metros or areas that you're referring to. So you get the economy of scale. These commercial um, products get uh, much higher quality national tenants or, and longer term loans. And the uh, triple net that Steve was referring to is pretty typical. And that's where the uh, taxes, insurance, and repairs get passed on to the tenants. So what that does is to help reduce the um, unknowns, the, uh, the, uh, the lack of predictability about uh, what, how that property is going to perform. You don't have to guess where the taxes, insurance, and repairs are going to be, then that makes the returns a lot more, uh, lot more predictable. Um, the, um, now, the, the trick, of course, is that you always want the highest cap rates, meaning uh, the cap rate is the highest, is the percent return you get in the first year on a property, any investment, if there were no, no loan on it. Uh, you always want the lowest risk and you always want the highest appreciation. And the trick is to, uh, you can't get all three of those perfectly. What you're trying to do is find the best compromise between those and find the sweet spot where they all overlap. And that's, uh, you know, that's a large part of what Steve job, Steve's uh, job is to go um, sort through all of these different products with his staff and his knowledge and experience and uh, go find the few, the few uh, golden nuggets that then he gets to do significant desktop due diligence and then go on site due diligence and then offer a letter of intent that would meet our investors' return requirements and see which ones that can engage with him 
and then negotiate all the details. And then finally, we get a contract on a great property that has been sorted out of uh, literally hundreds, if not thousands of different products. Is that a good summary, Steve? Yes, it is. <laughs> you, you know all too well, don't you? <laughs> that's a, that's a, lot of, a lot of work, a lot of due diligence. So it takes, um, takes a staff, takes the experience and skill set, uh, takes a lot of product to go uh, sift through to get the right one. And um, so one of those that, uh, that you have found is Western Crossing uh, Retail Center. So tell us how you found that. I was two years ago negotiating on a, a large retail center uh, with a, a local, well, it's a national brokerage company, but dealing with the Dallas office of that. And we got uh, to the bridesmaid position, number two position on that deal. And through that process, I got to know those agents uh, very well and kind of we had a, a mutual respect with each other. And then I was at the uh, ICSC retail uh, convention last fall, and uh, they were there and they came over and indicated that they had a deal that was uh, coming out on the market. They knew that I was familiar with the Amarillo market. And so they, uh, they told me about this asset before it went on the market and gave us the opportunity to have a good close look at it before our competition did. Good. And then, uh, then what happened? Well, then it, uh, the seller was a large institutional seller from California. They would not entertain a, uh, just a single offer. They wanted the property marketed. So we continued to market the property. Uh, we eventually made an offer when they had the call for offers. Then that was followed up by interviews with the, uh, the top uh, three people. And then we were invited uh, to submit a best and final offer, uh, which we did. And... We didn't get it. We didn't get it. That's correct. The <laughs> readout in New York was the, the top bidder. And then about uh, almost two months later, I received a call back, and uh, that REIT had even failed to, uh, to sign the contract. They'd been negotiating the contract for almost eight weeks, and the seller lost confidence in the group. And so uh, we got a, another shot at the deal. And that was partly because you already had a relationship with a listing broker, right? Correct. Yep. Right, through the prior relationship, yes. Okay, and then uh, so we got another shot at it and said, uh, yeah, if you can um, uh, close on this and come up with these terms, uh, we think uh, think we can get it for you. And the deed came back and um, got the win. So, uh, so we got, um, that, was, that was an exciting day. So uh, got Steve Fithian on the Line with us, experienced uh, commercial broker in Texas, and our syndicating partner will be back with us in a bit. We're going to talk some more detail about what Western Crossing is about, why we like it, what the returns are, what the risks are, uh, why we think it's an outstanding, in fact, the uh, best value product that Steve has seen in uh, 10 years. So stay with us on uh, Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. Thanks for being with us. We have Steve Fithian, a 30-year experience commercial broker and uh, my... Uh, partner and syndicator in uh, great commercial properties that we've been able to provide to our clients. And we're very excitedly have our latest one is called Western Crossing Retail Center, a uh, $20 million retail center in uh, Amarillo, Texas. And uh, Steve, let's, uh, let's dive into that. Let's give them the, uh, 
the stats to start with, I guess, it's $20.2 million. Uh, we feel its uh, market value is maybe something like 22. So we think we have some equity built in. It's a seven-year projected investment. It's a Class A single-story retail building built in 2008, 2009. So it's pretty new, 167,000 square feet. As um, we've got uh, as a capital raise of 5.8 million. The loan amount, which is the loan with it, we are assuming is uh, 15.6 uh, million. And uh, we'll get into the finances later, but we're planning to have 637 million, uh, a thousand in uh, reserves. We always like to have high reserves and not too high leverage so that we can uh, weather a storm. That's one of the secrets to, uh, to success. And uh, what else can we uh, can you describe about the uh, retail center, uh, Steve? What do we like about it? Well, it's the second highest traffic count intersection in the entire town, and it's right on the frontage road to the, uh, the highway. Uh, this highway carries lots of traffic between multiple large cities. The only intersection that has higher traffic count is where their major medical center is. There's no retail at that intersection. So we feel uh, very good about the, the location of the center. The tenant mix is fantastic. We've got uh, multiple anchor national tenants, uh, including uh, Michael's, Burlington Coat Factory, Petco, uh, Mardell. So very strong uh, long-term leases with options on those particular tenants. And then we have inline space that also has a, a very good lineup. Uh, there's a, a deli, a pizza place, a Chinese restaurant, um, a, a battery uh, store. And then they were just in the process of signing a letter of intent with Quest, which is a, a medical firm, a national medical firm. So we've got a, a great location with a, a newer quality retail center in good condition uh, with great uh, tenant mix. Now, all of what we've done with syndications and most of our personal holdings in the past has been in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, general area. But uh, we feel half of what's good about this is from a location standpoint is that it's still in Texas, which means that it's uh, centrally located it's in the uh, southern belt. Uh, in general, you know, there's a huge number of co- corporations throughout the country that have, especially in California, that have moved their uh, headquarters to Texas. So there's tremendous uh, job growth. In fact, there's uh, more jobs added since the crash in Texas and all the rest of the country put together. And we, um, you know, housing has been very stable. In fact, housing dropped the least of any metro in the United States during the crash. And Steve and I like having, um, we like downside protection as much as we like upside uh, growth and cash flow. So I think all of us, after experiencing this last Great Recession are more sensitive to that uh, as well. Cost of living is the lowest of the major economy states, and the uh, government uh, financial stability is the best of all the major economy states. So now let's talk a little bit about Amarillo. Why Amarillo? Was that a targeted place? No, it wasn't targeted, but uh, you had some exposure to it. You've been managing a Best Buy there, right, Steve? Right, a little over two and a half years that we've managed uh, the Best Buy in Amarillo. And then I I have kids in Denver, so I drive right through Amarillo each time I go to Denver. So I've had uh, experience for for 20-some years with Amarillo from the standpoint of driving through, stopping at uh, restaurants, et cetera. And I've already been amazed at the the growth there as well as the activity in their retail and their restaurants. And it's it's really the... uh... Uh, and anybody who's ever driven around the South or lives in that general area knows about Amarillo as being uh, basically, I, I like to kind of um, metaphorically refer to it as the, as the oasis for that whole, uh, that whole region between Denver and Dallas and Oklahoma City and Albuquerque. Uh, it is the go-to place in that area. In fact, 40% of all the shoppers for Amarillo are from outside the area. We'll be back in a minute to talk uh, more about uh, the region and Western Crossing and about the, uh, what kind of um, returns it is offering, which is why we invest in these things. So we have Steve Fithian in uh, Dallas on the line with us, a 30-year experienced uh, commercial broker. We're talking about Western Crossing on KDOW 1220 AM, the Wall Street Business Network. Stay with us on Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be back with you in just a moment. 
For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. We have with us today Steve Fithian, managing broker in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth of the SVN uh, formerly Sperry Van S office and my um, partner and co-syndicator of our syndications that we offer to our clients, including our latest one, Western Crossing Retail Center that's in Amarillo, Texas, which is in the, um, it is the economic center for the um, whole Texas and Oklahoma panhandles in eastern New Mexico. It has a very broad-based economy. It's about a quarter of a million people. It's a very broad-based economy for um, a, a relatively uh, small city. Uh, Bell Helicopters uh, built a major facility there 10 years ago. It has a lot of food processing. It processes one quarter of all of the beef in the United States through that region. Uh, established in the mid-1800s as a, uh, as a train, um, major crossroads and, uh, and stop. The uh, retail occupancy is 97.1% in that uh, area. And it uh, only dropped by two percentage points during the crash. Housing only dropped 1.4 percent during the crash. Amazing stability. Those stats are even better than Dallas. So, uh, what else can you think of, Steve? Any other stats to to uh, quote well, about? Like to, right. I point out that the unemployment rate is the lowest in the state, and the state unemployment rate is one of the lowest in the nation. The current unemployment rate in Amarillo is 2.7, and at the height of the recession. Uh, the highest the unemployment rate uh, got in Amarillo was 5.2. Amazing. So extremely stable uh, market. There, and uh, lots of employers with uh, over 1,000 uh, employees. So it's not a one-horse town. It's not a North Dakota. It's not, a, uh, it's not an area that's um, dependent upon one major economy. So I think, I think we like as much the uh, protected downside risk of this region as we do uh, the, the, uh, the upside. In, in general, I think the region and uh, this product, I think we feel is probably the highest value we've had, the highest uh, highest return for the lowest risk. It hit since, uh, yes, I would say since the early 90s when I first came to Texas, I would agree. And that's usually, uh, usually those two are in conflict, right? Usually you get higher returns and you got to take on higher risk, but not the, uh, so not the case with this. So we, uh, now this is on I-40. Um, the whole I-40 corridor going through Amarillo is pretty well built out on both sides. This is sitting right on I-40, 87,000 cars a, a day going by there. It's got four national uh, food uh, brands that are sitting out in front, uh, including Olive Garden and Starbucks and uh, so forth. And we've got three national hotels that are adjacent to the property. So it has a large draw for traffic coming in, and in fact, the visibility is greater than the only major mall, a Westgate Mall, which is uh, just down the freeway a bit. And the leasing agent tells us that there's more demand by anchor stores for Western Crossing than there is uh, is for the mall. Nonetheless, the mall is 100% occupied. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which again reflects the the great retail market in town. That's right. In fact, uh, when Steve and I went. Of course, did a lot of homework on the ground, and then uh, Steve and I went there to spend some days uh, putting our eyes on it and making sure we're not going to offer something like this to our clients without uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, personal due diligence as well. And we, uh, for example, we, we walked every single unit of the Western Crossing, went all the way through the store, checked out the bathrooms, looked at the ceilings for leaks, uh, talked to folks uh, in the shoppers and so forth. We went uh, into the mall down the road, we walked through the entire mall, and we did not see a single empty store. It's amazing. Got Steve Fithian, uh, 
the Coast Indicator of Western Crossing Retail Center and uh, a 30-year uh, commercial broker in Texas. And I'm Tom K. Wilson here on Real Estate Radio Live on KDOW 1220 AM, the Wall Street Business Network. We're talking about the uh, Western Crossing Retail Center, and we'll be back uh, and with you in just a moment. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. We have with us uh, on the line from Dallas, Steve Fithian, uh, the managing partner of of many syndications and 30 years commercial uh, brokerage experience in multifam, residential, and commercial properties. Right now, we like commercial uh, more. Be- why? Because the returns are higher. Why? Because there's a better supply demand ratio for that than there is for multifam, which has peaked out in most cities. So we're, uh, we're investing now more in commercial, and that's what we're recommending that our investors do. And uh, briefly, I should say that, you know, if you're Thinking about commercials, great, but I can't afford that. Uh, we should mention that uh, we these are syndications that we offer, which means for fifty thousand dollars a share, you can participate in a product that uh, normally only large investors and institutional investors can afford to be in. So, uh, so for fifty thousand a share, you can be part of a twenty million dollar real center. And uh, this is a type of syndication which we're allowed to offer to the general public. So you don't have to be a member of an exclusive group. You, uh, you get to participate. So uh, a lot of people are taking advantage of this and are very, uh, very excited about it. Uh, basically, with syndication, you're taking advantage of the expertise of an uh, experienced uh, team of syndicators that put it together and their ability to uh, get access to lots of products and find and negotiate and manage the best ones. So uh, not only... Do we get it? But uh, Steve's property management company manages it to help maximize the probability of executing the uh, performance. So with that, Steve, there's a couple more comments about uh, Amarillo, other things we saw that we liked there. Well, we did an uh, excessive amount of due diligence. Uh, the trip that Tom uh, mentions, uh, I was there uh, several days longer. I've made another trip back and spent <clears throat> another three or four days but we visited at multiple places at the city looking for code violations, looking in their planning and, uh, and development department, what else is going on in Amarillo, where is the growth occurring, you know, where is single-family uh, construction taking place. We visited multiple brokers, both commercial and residential, walked residential properties. I drove every single retail center in town. Um, so, I mean, it goes on and on. That's what we were doing, feet on the ground, and, of course, that was backed up by a lot of other due diligence on the Internet, as well as ordering and uh, reviewing property uh, condition reports, environmental reports, substantial amount of uh, rehab that was done, and all of that just even strengthened our, our feeling about how we feel about the Amarillo market. Did you mention that uh, we learned that Clint Eastwood is moving from California to Amarillo? 
<laughs> that's what I saw on the internet. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but it was on the internet. I've seen it since. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what what better endorsement can we get? The next thing is we need to <laughs> need to get a picture of him on a horse in Amarillo, right? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Make my day, huh? All right. <laughs> Well, this place certainly has made our day. Uh, excited about it. Let's uh, talk about the uh, what kind of return something like this offers. So, this particular deal, we've negotiated a good enough deal and good enough product that it's getting. Um, we're projecting a fourteen percent annual return on this uh, internal rate return after sale, including the appreciation. Eight percent preferred return, which is uh, largely tax sheltered during the seven-year hold period. So, uh, this is. An 8.25 cap. If we were, um, and if uh, this were in a uh, major coastal city like uh, San Jose or or uh, New York, these numbers would probably be for at least we've talked to commercial brokers locally, and they would be half at best these numbers. You you concur, Steve? That about right? Yes. Even in Dallas, uh, Dallas proper, a quality power center like this with the same uh, tenant mix would be a cap rate in the low sixes. And, but what I do, I've gone through 22 different uh, sales transactions of power centers in our, our geographic area, our regional area. And if you pull out uh, the larger cities like Dallas and leave uh, your smaller uh, secondary tertiary cities, the cap rate uh, still is in the, the sevens. I mean, uh, roughly an average of about 739 and our, uh, the, what we're purchasing the property at is a cap rate of 8.02. And so we have uh, a substantial amount of equity going into the property. And then with the bumps in the existing leases the first year, the cap rate at the end of the first year is 8.2. So we feel very, very good about the value and the return. And so what happens is as leases go up in value or go up, then that makes the um – income higher relative to the expenses and drives up what uh, is referred to as the NOI or net operating income. And the net operating income is what uh, establishes uh, value along with whatever the market cap rate is at the time. So, uh, so Steve, after seven years, what are you anticipating we'll sell this for? How, how much? I, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers here in front of me, but I'm using a 7.39 exit cap rate and that price at the end of seven years uh, drives the internal rate of return of 14%. Okay, and I'm seeing now going to the investors would be $3.7 uh, $7 million on top of the um, cash flow that they get from the uh, 8% per year. So basically, at the, end of, uh, at the end of seven years, for each 50 k that you invest into a share, you get uh, $110,000 back. And that's uh, with a with a property that's uh, sitting at 98%. Our assumptions we feel are conservative. Uh, we assumed a uh, lower um, occupancy than what it's currently doing. We assumed a uh, cap rate that's very consistent with uh, what it is now. And we uh, and the and then the greatest uh, crash or recession since the Great Depression. We've got uh, we got us. Metro that dropped only 2% in retail occupancy and only 1.4% in uh, residential median value, which is absolutely amazing. We, uh, we just couldn't, uh, we were like kids in the candy store going around figuring, uncovering, uh, trying to turn over every stone to try to find something wrong with the region and wrong with the center. And, uh, basically, uh, we could not. So, uh, we've, uh, Finest uh, value investment that we've seen in um, about 10 years, and uh, we're excited to uh, make it available. If you have interest in it, um, you know, give us a call at uh, 408-867-1867 or go to info at tomwilsonproperties.com. And when we come back here with Steve in a moment, we'll do a little bit of uh, wrap-up and summary. So uh, stay with us on uh, Real Estate Radio Live, KDOW. Uh, 1220 AM, the Wall Street Business Network. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com.
Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit RERadioLive.com. That's RERadioLive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. Topic of day is Western Crossing Retail Center, how you can own a um, 20 Point two million dollar retail center that's ninety eight percent occupied and only eight years old, uh, in a thriving economic region for only fifty thousand dollars a share. Uh, amazing. Um, talk. Uh, let's summarize it a little bit there, Steve, and uh, let's talk a little bit more about what the advantages are of uh, participating as a um, as an investor in a syndication. Well, one thing that we haven't mentioned is the financing, and uh, Tom and I are. Um, assuming that loan. So we are the individuals that are on the loan. So from the standpoint of the investors in the syndication, there's no liability whatsoever for the loan. And yet the investors get the benefit of a, a fixed rate loan with a 30 year amortization. And there's no and, liability uh, in general. If the property got sued because somebody tripped, uh, the, the investors isolated from that. That's correct. That is absolutely correct. So I would say big benefits of a syndication. Then one, we just mentioned the financing. Secondly, is the professional management. The third is that it enables most people to uh, own a much larger quality center that they would not be able to do on their own. So those are, uh, I'd say, three substantial benefits. And we all already mentioned earlier in the call about the benefits of triple net leases and what they offer as far as insulation against inflation. As price, prices rise, these leases typically go up as well as the recapture of the operating expenses. So some very favorable uh, benefits over investing directly in real estate. So we have a retail center that's recently built, 90 occupied, um, sitting right on a major interstate freeway uh, in the middle of, a, of an ec- economic region. And it, uh, the whole region held up uh, extremely well during the recession, more than most any other city that, we, that I know of. Uh, just held up uh, amazingly well, so I think we have great downside protection, and it's a uh, and this is a go go to center. It has a high demand for it, and uh, and the for the leasing agent tells us, and we are uh, couldn't be more excited about it. It's uh, so to get this quality of product at a 14% uh, internal rate of return and an 8% preferred return is just uh, just amazing. So for 50,000 a share. Uh, ask for or go to info at tomwilsonproperties.com or call 408-867-1867. Ask for the private placement memorandum, which gives you all the details. Or we can email it or mail it to you, either one. Uh, and we'll be glad to uh, share with you uh, any information that you would uh, you would like. Any, any closing comment there, Steve? I'm just excited personally about the center. Looking forward to uh, closing and ownership. Yeah, we are too. This is uh, going to be a winter and shoot. Um, I think uh, we might be going going back to visit once in a while as well. <laughs> it's not. It's a it's very uh, very nice place to be. We were well received. I can see why people like stopping there, and I think it's going to uh, be a great long term uh, value for all of the investors. This is Tom K. Wilson on Real Estate Radio Live on KDOW. Remember to go to TomWilsonProperties.com. There's a lot of information about Western Crossing on there. There's a video about uh, Western Crossing that gives you a nice overview with drone shots and so forth, and um, lots of information. So um, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Steve, for being on again, and we hope to have you uh, as a uh, co-investor. Steve and I are invested in it ourselves, and we hope to have you with us. So um, remember, the only thing that matters is what you do next. Thanks for being with us. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit RERadioLive.com. That's RERadioLive.com. Tune in, log in, download our podcast. Discover more at RERadioLive.com. RERadioLive.com. Because you